All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Linda Langston goes to the post office about once a week. I send money orders. Um, I get copies of things made, certain different things, you know, whatever I need. Yesterday when I came in, it was colder inside there than it was outside. And it was my hands, my nose, everything was cold. And I asked the girl, she said, we've had no heat for a month or two. The place she relied on so much gave her the cold shoulder. Langston says customers felt the chill, employees too. They had the flu, they'd been sick, and she said it's just miserable to work in the cold like this. Labor attorney Gary Freed says these types of issues don't happen as often as they did in the past because larger companies and agencies have adopted higher labor standards. And because the U.S. Postal Service leases the building, they could try and seek help from the landlord. One would need to take a look at what happened and what was the cause of it and whether the Postal Service itself made any attempts to remedy the condition or expedite it. In a statement, a USPS spokesperson confirmed issues with the heating system at the post office on Windy Hill Road and that local management worked with a local contractor to make repairs using portable heating units in the meantime. The Postal Service says the heating system is now working, but it has not determined the cause of the issue or how long it went on. The building seemed a little warmer today for Linda Langston, long overdue for the place and the workers she relies on. They work hard all day. They shouldn't have to work in cold conditions. Somebody should have helped them a long time ago. In Smyrna. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? Yes, we are. There are some people that are not feeling iry because they are right now freezing their backsides off. What are we talking about? We're talking about post office being a federal we are working for the post office but yet some places don't have the basic essentials I spoke about it before we didn't have some bathrooms in some places we didn't have running water in some places we didn't have air condition in some places now we don't even have heat in some places let's talk Linda Langston goes to the Smyrna post office on Windy Hill Road about once a week. She sends money orders, drops off mail, gets copies, and makes takes advantage of other services. Amid the holiday rush at the post office, it wasn't the drop boxes that were getting all the attention. It was the drop in temperature. Yesterday when I came in, it was colder inside than it was in outside, Langston said. It was my hands, my nose, everything was cold. I asked the girl and she said they had no heat for a month or two. The place she relied on so much gave her the cold shoulder. Langston said customers complained about how chilly it was inside the post office for weeks. The heat reportedly was not on and employees felt the chill too. Employees told me they have had the flu, they've been sick, and she said it's just miserable to work in cold like this, Langston said. All day like that in those conditions, I told her this was inhumane. And she was said, absolutely, it was pitiful. She had a hat on and gloves on and everything. This is inside the post office family. She said she couldn't hardly stand it. It was just miserable. Labor attorney Gary Freeze said these types of issues don't happen often and they did in the past because larger companies and agencies have adopted higher labor standards and because the US Postal Service leases buildings, they could try to seek help from the landlord. One would need to take a look at what happened, what was the cause of it, and whether the Postal Service itself made any attempts to remedy the condition or expedite it, Freed said. Generally, employees do not have direct claims against employers given they are covered by workers' compensation. In a statement of the United States Postal Service spokesperson confirmed issues with the heating system at the post office and that local management had worked with a local contract to make repairs. This is a good part. The well-being of our employees and our customers are the priority of the Postal Service. Regarding issues with the heating system at the Smyrna GA Post Office, 
Local management is aware and has taken steps to address the matter. While repairs are being made, temporary portable heating units have been deployed on site. We continue to work with local contractors to ensure repairs are made promptly. Postal management will continue to monitor the system's performance to ensure a suitable comfort level for our employees and our customers. We apologize for any inconvenience that may have been experienced. This specific cause of issues is undetermined at this time. Currently, the heating system is in working order. We will continue to monitor and address. The Postal Service did not address how long the issue went on. While the building seemed to be a little warmer for Langston on Wednesday, it was in her mind it was long overdue for the place the workers she relies on. They work hard all day. They shouldn't have to go work in cold conditions. Sometimes someone should have helped them a long time ago. Here's a kicker now that we've read that article. A couple things. I spoke about post offices in the past. We don't have sprinkler systems. We don't have the sprinkler systems. And I know I got a lot of people that gave me kickback and feedback on that, saying that it's a government facility, they can, etc. So I just wanted to let you guys know, unless the building is owned by the post office, yeah, they have to have it. The majority of the buildings that are leased have to have fire sprinklers. I know this because Jay accidentally, <laughs> Jay got in trouble last week. I didn't get in trouble, but I kind of got in trouble. I got screamed on by a couple of the uh, secretaries for the postmasters. And this is, hard, this is not even an article. This is seriously what happened. I was standing outside, minding my business like I always do. And a fire marshal was up there trying to get in the building. And I'm like, hey, how can I help you? There was a situation at my building the day before. So I was like, hey, maybe this guy's here to take care of the situation from the day before. And he was like, no, I'm here to see the postmaster. I said, you sure you're here to see the postmaster? Maybe the plan manager said no I'm here to see the postmaster the person over the city units I'm like oh, okay sure just stay right here actually I let him in the building but I let him sit right there in the front area so I went to the secretaries and they were like well who's here and I said well, yeah, I guess he's here for the postmaster and she said you sure for the postmaster I said yeah this man said he was for the postmaster and they said well give me a second I'm gonna go get the secretary for the plan manager I said okay we'll do what you do the man's sitting right there in the front he can't get past anywhere and they said okay fine so as I'm walking out this man has in his hand, apparently the stations sent them to the plant, sent him to the plant to talk to the postmaster because they had issues with the fire alarms not working and there were no sprinkler systems. And I guess this happened a year ago and they addressed it, but it never got situated. So as he was talking to them, he said, yes, well, if it's your building, we can't do anything about it. But if you're leasing a building in a area in the county, we have all rights to go in there and check them. I was like, well, damn, I learned something new. And so I don't know how much the fines will work or whatever the case is. But I know when I walk back in there, the secretaries were very upset. They said, man, you don't let nobody in the building. I said, hell if I know he's a fireman, he's a fire marshal. You got to let these people in the building. And I'm thinking to myself, the reason that they can't, we've had people die in the building because the fire people can't get in the building. Isn't that a shame? Fire people and the rescue people can't get in the building. They have to get some protocol. I know I'm drifting here, but all of this ties into what the post office tries to keep behind the scenes. This is what I'm getting at. You don't have to keep foolishness behind the scenes if you don't have foolishness going on to begin with. Humane conditions are basic needs for you and me. Humane conditions, such as air conditioners and vehicles, they're working on it. But if you don't even have a bathroom in a facility, or if you don't have heat in a facility, I remember giving you guys an article or talking to somebody a while ago, and the person said something about having to bring their own fan and they get written up. I mean, Really? And I know there's a lot of supervisors that watch me. You guys are gonna pass it around because you have no life and you got nothing else to do. Ask me if I give two fucks. Ooh, yeah, Jay cursed. Do your due diligence. Stop trying to harbor the little bit of money that the post office grants each area and utilize it for what it's for. Now, from a management perspective, here goes. They used to, and I know the plant manager, she did her due diligence. People could not stand this lady. 
I respected her. She was a little brash, but I respected her. But she went when they had issues with no air conditioning in my facility and ordered a ton of fan. I'm talking about the big super fans. Now, people don't know how much these things cost, but they're pricey. But because it doesn't come out of your pocket, they don't give a rat's ass. You know every single one of those fans were destroyed and damaged by who? Mail handlers. That's right, mail handlers. Mail handlers tore them fans up, ran over them with the forklifts, backed up over them with the electric pallet jacks, tore, destroyed them. Maybe two months. Brand new. Now, the post office did what they could temporarily because the part to get the air condition fixed took forever, old buildings, but the lady went and made sure she ordered something to try to alleviate it. I get it. If you don't have electricity at home, me, like my electricity goes out, what do I use? A candle, temporary fix, but she used the temporary fix, and what happened? Our own workers destroyed it because they're careless. They don't give two rats asses. So it kind of hits on both sides, hits on both sides. The management gives two rats asses. We're talking about the water yesterday. They harbor in the water, harbor in the water. That's not right. But somebody put in the comment section, hey, you know why they harbor in the water? Because employees are taking cases of water home. So I get it. Y'all are screwing yourselves sometimes. We can't sit here and fight for our rights if you got some idiots sitting there count, being counterproductive to what our needs are. It is always the sour few that ruin the whole bunch. You see how I went from my tone to this up to here? Because this is the foolishness we encounter on a consistent basis. It went from somebody simply talking about heat in a building to talking about water in a building, talking about bathrooms in a building. But these are the things that go on continuously. So to the two secretaries that I cherish. I love these two ladies, but they were like, hey, you can't blend people in. I apologize for that. But to the postmaster, <laughs> I don't give two rats asses about that dude. Step your game up. Tell, get on the phone and get whoever you need in there, whatever contractor you need in there so that they can make sure that your employees are protected. Bottom line, safety for your employees, right? the basic human needs, safety for your employees, that kind of rhymed, icky, icky, kind of rhymed. All right, look, I'm being a little animated, but y'all could talk about this. We could talk about this. You can get on my case. I'll get on your case as well. If I buy a brand new fan and somebody destroys it, do I go back in my pocket and buy a brand new fan tomorrow? And then the next day, no, no, no. They're gonna say, how oh, you know it's the mail handlers, Jay? I witnessed it. They fixed doors on the dock. Mail handlers, they bow, smash the doors up. Then complain when things don't get fixed in a timely manner. It's us destroying the equipment. Brand new trucks, destroying them. Brand new Pro Masters, ripping them apart. Brand new Mercedes mattresses, ripping them up. Who destroys the equipment? You do. Me us and then we say oh man we ain't got nothing to work with you we expect them to turn around and supply us with more we acting like spoiled children and we grown adults you see how i flipped this around right i gotta give different perspectives family gotta give different perspectives because it's reality i'm not here to appease to one person i'm here to simply speak about what i think is truth you could agree or disagree that's what the channel's for let's talk about it Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.